uh, in the previous class, uh, we have said about uh, how you can identify the constituents of milk, but primarily fat, protein and carbohydrate. Right? I, I have never said that you can measure like that, you can identify. Identification and measurement are altogether different. Right? Generally, fat in milk is uh, identified and, uh, and also measured by the method called Garber's centrifuge method, but these will come afterwards as and when it appears. So, in this class, again, we are in the dairy and food process and products technology and uh, in lecture, lecture number 18, we come to milk, how it looks like, right? how it looks like. We have already said that this color of the milk, which we have all said that this is blue in color, in maybe, maybe white uh, in color, maybe, blah, maybe a little uh, ye golden yellow in color depending on the source, depending on the constituents. Primarily, if it is defended milk, then it may be uh, your blue stain may be there or things like that. But if it is a high fat milk, then it could be uh, your uh, golden yellow color, right. Also, we said that if it is thin uh, in quantity, then it may appear to be uh, translucent or transparent or if it is, if it is, if it is uh, huge in quantity, large in quantity, then it becomes uh, uh, opaque, right. This opaqueness is of course, because of the, uh, the light scattering through the different particles of the milk, right. Then we come to taste. So, no pronounced taste, but slightly sweet. There is no as such pronounced taste, but it is slightly sweet. Freshly drawn milk has a characteristic odor, which is volatile and disappears when milk is exposed to air, right. It has a characteristic milk, milk has a characteristic odor, right. And the other day we had also said that how, when we were saying about quality, how odor and flavor this distinction we had made, right. We are not bringing back to those again. So, it disappears when it is exposed to air, right. Now, in terms of acidity, milk is normally amphoteric in nature. Now, amphoteric means, what is amphoteric? Amphoteric is that which gives both red and lit, uh, blue litmus, which turns both red and blue litmus into either red to blue, blue to red, right. Uh, that uh, it turns uh, both the litmus paper, right. So, in that case, we can say that it is amphoteric, that it is having both acidic as well as alkaline behavior. But by and large, generally, milk is acidic in nature for many of the reasons. If it is freshly drawn milk, then also it appears to be slightly acidic. Very rarely, you will get that it is uh, amphoteric or, or alkaline in nature. That is very, very rarely in typical case it may appear, but by and large it is uh, turning or it, it is acidic in nature, right. So, blue to red, red to blue both are possible theoretically, but again in all practical purposes we call it to be slightly acidic in nature, right. With phenolphthalein indicator, fresh milk shows an acid reaction if titrated against standard alkali. Now, as we said just now that though we call it to be amphoteric, but uh, in all practical purposes 
even if we put uh, it will I, I understand we know that acid base reactions. So, in that phenolphthalein is given as indicator and if phenolphthalein indicator is given and if we, if we titrate we find it to be acidic in nature. right? So, acidity varies between 0.1 to 0.26 percent in terms of lactic acid. right? So, 0.1 to 0.26 percent in terms of lactic acid. So, we'll, when we will progress in this in this topic in this subject. So, we will see that there are various reasons why the acidity will go up right why the acidity will go up or goes up why it becomes more acidic gradually the, that will come up uh, afterwards. But generally freshly drawn milk has acidity to the tune of 0.1 to 0.26 percent of per acid in terms of lactic acid. Now, why it is said in terms of lactic acid? Why not in terms of citric acid or any other acid? Because milk contains lactose that we have seen and this lactose by bacterial decomposition it produces lactic acid right since it produces lactic acid so that is why the acidity in milk is expressed in terms of lactic acid so 0.1 to 0.26 percent lactic acid or, or in terms of lactic acid is normally present in milk that is why if the acidity is low we call it to be a good milk if the acidity goes up we maybe that uh, milk might not have gone wrong wrong why we are saying uh, we are coming to that wrong means there will be a precipitation so which we have seen we have sh we, we have said the other day for identification that you have put some acid and something has come out. So, that may happen if the acidity goes up. right? So, that is why it is not desirable that the acidity of milk is high. right? Normally, freshly drawn milk has low acidity around 0 0.1 to 0.0 up to 0.26 it is said acceptable. Beyond that it may not be because then there are many other tests by which this acidity also can be that is called platform test someday we will also tell that right someday sometime in some period we will also tell that there are some platform tests right. I, uh, I still remember like the other day I said I was in some industry there a uh, lot of milk used to come and the quality control people used to uh, uh, assess them because they have to they then tell whether it is good or bad right so they used to take it consume it and orally they used to test which is not of course scientific but you just cannot do it you imagine a room full of milk containers and in 2 5 minutes you have to either tell them yes you, they will go in or they have to thrown out or discarded. So, that decision has to be given then which may not be possible for any such test by which they can or they used to do it which I objected, but however, this is what is the reality in, in industry. Of course, I am not saying that that is uh, bad part of the industry, but people who are working they have to survive, they have to also tell, they have to decide on what right. If it is to be uh, totally on scientific basis, then it will take a lot of time and uh, the way things are coming, uh, it is not possible to handle in very short period. So, they used to have. So, that is what the test because acidity you can also test. You can you our test buds can tell whether one is one food is bitter or sour or sweet or salty 
these test three birds we have and we can identify very easily. That is why they might have been using their test bird for controlling or for measuring this. However, the acidity of milk is between 0.1 to 0.126 if it is freshly drawn. Freshly drawn milk also has a pH of around 6.5, right. Now, another typical thing which we will now say is which we have come across or we come across every day because milk is one such product, one such food product which almost every house or all the houses do have every day almost. So, in that case you might have noticed that when milk is being heated or boiled that time and there is there is a proverb of course in it in many cases many people do say that milk is a second wife right or 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 second wife means is is so uh, uh, shy that turn your face if you turn your face from milk when it is being heated then it it, uh, it is said that it becomes very much angry and that is why it spills out and this is an experience which everybody must have or must have come across in the life. So, this is because when you are heating milk then what is happening some part of fat, some part of protein they are coming up and forming a layer on the surface and this fine layer on the surface does not allow moisture or vapor to come out from interior of the milk. The moment this vapor is not allowed to come out in from the interior to the outside ambient, then what is happening? That barrier is coming up, coming up and if you do not take care then it spills out, right. That is why milk gets spilled out during boiling. And that is why you have to take a lot of care while you are boiling milk and that is why that proverb is said, right. So, this you have to also keep in mind that when milk is being heated that a crust is formed and this crust is made of fat and protein which comes out from the milk during boiling, right. So, that is what we are saying here a tough film is formed, a tough film is formed and that is on the surface of the uh, milk container and that comes out that that prevents moisture to come out or vapor to come out and it spills away right. So, on prolonged heating boiling a uh, brown shade color is there and a change in taste is also there. You might have seen at home mummy and many seniors they are making different uh, milk products, different 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 dishes for with milk. Maybe uh, I do not know whether what you call payasham or kheer or things like that and for that they are boiling milk for a long time without adding anything. And you might have observed that when you are heating or to start with uh, boiling the milk they might have started with white milk, but when it is getting concentrated then gradually the color is getting changed from this white to say maybe some brownish or some uh, yeah yellowish deep deep uh, brownish color in that is because of course that is because that uh, we must know that this chemistry also that uh, when you are heating uh, milk contains what milk contains we have seen fat protein carbohydrate carbohydrate in the form of lactose right and this is of course, a part of chemistry that uh, lactose is a sugar 
and when you are heating sugar then there is if it is directly being heated then there is a reaction goes on and that is called caramelization. This caramelization produces uh, that red color or brown color not red brown color and this brown color is one of the reason is caramelization and another vital reason particularly in milk is that this sugar milk also contains a lot of protein that we have identified. So, this protein and the sugar they react and they form a caramelized product as well the Maillard product or Maillard reaction happens that is called when sugar and amine they are together sugar and amine they are together being heated then they form this reaction that is the caramelization and um, the Maillard reaction and both forms melanoidins which are brownish in color. This is a chemistry of course, this is true for any whether it is in milk or any other it is true that when sugar is being heated and that is why I do not know whether you have observed or not uh, mummy and other who are making uh, dishes for you. So, during preparation they do add a little bit of sugar it is not for sweetening it is not maybe sometimes for some people maybe for sweetening, but primarily not for sweetening primarily that this uh, sugar where it is being heated then it forms caramelize it, it undergoes caramelization and that caramelization produces some color as well as some flavor. So, which are adding to the dish right that is what. So, and also in many other cases where you have both sugar and and nitrogen in the form of amine right nitrogen in the form of amine there is this sugar amine reaction that is called Maillard reaction that happens and that causes both color and flavor in the material food right in milk it also happens right. So, it results in a brown shade of color and a change in taste. Now, on acidification we have said in the previous class acidification we had done by in the milk we had put some uh, acid and we have seen some uh, precipitation has come up. So, that is what it also happens here that uh, this acidification results in precipitation of soft white jelly like mass and this is known as card with separation of nearly clear fluid or whey right. So, the other day uh, other class we said that how identify how to identify the protein and fat and other parts of the milk constituent there we had that is acidified we saw that some white uh, thing has come out and there of course, fat was separately taken off, but here we have not taken off fat separately. So, if you acidify then it produces a mass soft white jelly like mass and this is known as the card which separates out from the whey remaining part is called the whey and this is in in principle we call it to be chana right in principle we call it to be chana at home you might have seen mummy and others they are making chana by putting some acid that could be uh, citric acid or some salt or maybe some limbu pani that is also the citric acid. So, all these are added such that the separation or sedimentation of the card takes place and this is known as chana right which will also come afterwards. If a portion of fresh milk is allowed to stand undisturbed, then a layer forms on the surface known as cream due to the gathering of the fat globules, which can be examined under compound microscope, wherein 
immense numbers of glistening spherical bodies of varying sizes will be seen. This I just said the other day in the other class that if you look under microscope, then you see that fat globules are dancing, right. That is uh, what we are talking about that fat globules are dancing. So, if you just keep uh, uh, for some time milk undisturbed, then you will see some thing has come out and this thing which has come out is known as the fat, fat gets separated. Why and how we will come afterwards, but still we will we tell that uh, from the Stokes law you can tell that for a given time how much quantity of fat will come out just like that if you keep it like that right from the Stokes law there you have to know certain parameters like density, viscosity etcetera. Those things are to be known diameter of the fat globules uh, uh, these things are to be known, but you can predict right and uh, this is because when you are keeping the milk just like that for some time right. A layer forms on the surface known as cream due to the uh, gathering of the fat globules. Again I tell you one more thing that you might have come across with your age that by chance by accident of course, you do not do it uh, purposefully by accident if thermometer gets broken and thermometers are normally made of uh, mercury glass thermometer right. So, that mercury bulb if it gets broken that mercury drops and the moment that mercury drops lot of globules of mercury they are formed and of course, mercury is bad mercury is very poisonous. So, if it comes in contact with any cut surface that is very very bad right and uh, if you gather those mercury globules and if you see that one mercury globule is here right one mercury globule is here oh, and another mercury globule. So, one mercury globule is here and another mercury globule is nearby. So, these two attract each other and they become a bigger one right this is called coalescence right. Similar thing happens in fat globules also. When fat globules are nearby, then what they do? They do coalesce and form a bigger molecule right. As I just said that Stokes law where you will see that separation of this fat globule is a function of diameter and that to a square, square of the diameter right. So, that means, if the bigger the diameter is the more the coalescence is there, the more these fat globules agglomerate, the bigger is the size more will be the separation. That is what it happens when you are keeping milk just like that undisturbed right. Now, if the fresh milk is allowed to remain at ordinary temperature for 15 to 21 degrees centigrade for 24 hours or longer, right, it will have a pronounced acid taste. Again, here it comes. Here we have given a small temperature and time given to 24 hours, 15 to 20 degrees centigrade is very small. In our country, normal temperature in summer roughly somewhere around 35, 40 or even more right. So, one day you brought the milk from milkman or some supplier has given and you came to the class forgot to take care of the milk and the whole day you were very much busy 
and the temperature is very hot summer say 30, 40, 45 degree. So, in the evening when he went back and he wanted to have the milk, he wanted to boil. The moment you started that you saw that milk has got wrong. This is a, another thing which is associated with milk very, very frequently. Typically for the people like our, uh, like we are in the, uh, in our country rather, where the summer is a very, very high temperature summer. So, that it happens that it gets curdled. This is called, we call it to be curdling, right. Milk got curdled and in most of the cases, apart from few cases which is uh, not, I do not know whether that is justifiable or not. It should not be. From the point of view of science, it should not be. But some people do consume even then. But this should not be because you do not know when the accident will happen. What happens in it? When it is getting, you have taken, you have taken the milk, you have put it in the uh, not refrigerator just like that in outside ambient where the temperature is very high around 45, 40, 45 degrees centigrade and you got around 4, 5, 4, 5 or 7, 8 hours. So, in that what you have seen that it got curdled and if this curdled milk is taken, I am not saying there will be accident, but there is a pr probability. So, why to take the chance? Because you do not know, mummy has made curdling by giving known thing that is citric acid or limbupani or some salt. So, that curdling was chana is known, you have done it, but here you do not know, you have not given anything, it was in the air for couple of hours or maybe 8 to 10 hours and after that you have boiled it. So, you have boiled it that means, whatever was there by by the term of uh, pasteurization or uh, sterilization everything you have killed all the organisms. So, you can uh, consume it that is what many people do some people not many some people do, but you never know that who are to what the products during curling being formed because this curdling was primarily by the organisms which were invade, which invaded into the milk from the surrounding and this surrounding may contain lactobacillus or many other because milk is a very good source for organisms to survive or grow because it has all moisture fat, protein, carbohydrate, everything. So, very easy lot of food is there for the micro microbes to grow. So, they invaded into it, multiplied into it and then produce lot of acid and that acid curdled. Now, during this production of the acid, whether some other unwanted materials were also formed or not is not known. So, that is why it is never advisable that if a milk is curdled just like that, then you consume it because you do not know where, what the other materials are also formed other than acid. Acid could be one, but many others may also might have also formed that is not desirable, maybe some aldehydes, ketones which are not desirable and you have no control over that. So, that was done just like that by the nature, in this case nature is negative acting as negative because the invasion of the organisms which were not controlled by you. So, you do not know normally, normally as we said earlier that lactic acid producing organisms are normally called lactic acid bacteria. So, they do trans transform lactose into lactic acid, but here 
you have not and that is if you give lactic acid culture then it will be done. What mummy does in many cases you might have seen that in some cases that whey which is left over is also used for the acidi acidification or for the separation of this curd. In many cases it is done that is because that might have some some bacteria which is known that is lactic acid bacteria that will produce. But when it was done by keeping it for such a long time at high temperature we do not know which are the organisms invaded. So, it might not have only produced lactic acid it might have produced many other undesirable and which may be bad or uh, which may be which may be uh, what we call uh, poisonous or which may be bad to consume or uh, harmful to consume. So, that is not desirable. So, what we learn that anything curdling just like that from milk is not supposed to be consumed by the by the by the people right uh, only when you have curdled it by giving your own known quantity known things then only you can consume it right but never consume any such curdled milk if it is done by nature keeping it just like that for many many hours right okay today time is over thank you